What's up guys? Justin here with thecgessentials.com. So in today's video, we're kicking off our series on talking about how to use the compositor in Blender. So the compositor is going to allow you to add post-processing effects to images, renderings, and videos that you create in Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so I'm going to try to make the models available um, that I use in this series at the cgessentials.com slash compositor. So I'll link to that in the notes down below as well. But if you want to download those and follow along, you can definitely do that. It's just going to be simple models, but it could be really helpful for you to look at the node setups, other things like that. So first off, let's kick off by just taking a look at what the compositor is. And so basically what it's doing is it's using nodes in order to add post processing and other effects to your renderings or to your images that you create inside of Blender. So for example, you can use it to add things like denoising and um, just a bunch of different effects. You can add glare or color correction. It basically allows you to kind of adjust the images that you create inside of Blender. And so let's kick off just by uh, creating or taking a look at the compositing tab. And so I've just got this simple scene set up right now. Um, I've just got a camera that's just looking at my Bonnie model, a monkey, and then a couple spheres. So nothing special. And what we want to do is we want to jump over into the compositing tab. This is generally where you're going to work in the compositor and make these different changes. Now you could also just open up a uh, compositor window and create your own custom window if you want to do that. But the first thing you need to do when you open up the compositor is you need to have your nodes set up in here so that you can actually use them. And so you can get those to show up by checking the box for use nodes. And so when you do that, that's gonna pop up this node tree right here. And so this node tree is basically what you're going to use in order to add different effects to your images. And so if you look at this, there's an option in here for render layers. That's where all this kind of starts. That's where you get the data from your scene in order to start working with it with the nodes over here. Now note that if you go over into your view layer properties over here, you can add different data pieces into your render layers right here to work with. So you can check these boxes in order to um, add those different things. So you can check this box in order to have those additional options in here if you're looking for some more data. So notice how you can get different light options in here. There's a bunch of different things in here. We're not gonna worry too much about those for right now, um, but just know that that is an option. And so the first thing you might notice is there's actually nothing going on in here, right? There's no image, there's no nothing. And so the reason why is because in order for this to start working, you need to do a rendering first. And so you can either go to render, render image, or you can just tap F12 on your keyboard. I'm just gonna do a rendering based on the current data that I have in my scene. And so once that's done, I'm just gonna kind of move this off to the side. Notice how now, notice how now there's still nothing really showing up in here. Sometimes you have to like click this backdrop button in order for it to show up. But now you've got this kind of like preview image in here, which basically gives you an idea that, okay, there's an image in here that we can work with um, in order to do our compositing. And so the first thing to note about this is obviously this image is not very good to work with, right? Because it's really small. You can't really see what's happening. And so one of the things that you can do is as long as you have this backdrop option clicked on, you can add a viewer node. So if I do a shift A and add a viewer node right here, notice how this turned black right now, but if you take this image out of your render layers and drop it into that viewer node, now your image is gonna show up in the background right here. So now you can kind of see what's happening when you make those changes in your compositor. Now, one thing to note about this is this is a little bit big right? So you can kind of click and drag this around in order to move it in your space. You can also do a shift A and add a scale node in here. If you had a scale node in here, and then you bring this down to 0.5 and 0.5, now you're getting this image preview in the background here. Notice if I click on this viewer node, I can click and drag this inside of my scene. Now, um, there is a different way to do this that I've seen people do before that probably makes a little bit more sense. So you could kind of take these and kind of move them around to the side like this um, in order to kind of get it out of the way, but just working on top of your image isn't always the best thing to do. What you could do instead is you can drag a box over here and you can add an image editor view right here. And if you just click on the drop down and you find your render result, that's going to show this image right here. And you can work with that that way. 
too. So you could do that either up here or you could do it down below, kind of whatever works for you. But if you use this image over here, um, then you don't need to have the viewer node enabled in here. And all you could do in that case is just delete out that viewer node because you don't really need it anymore. You could just toggle the backdrop off as well. And so now I'm just gonna uncheck the box for backdrop as well. But now what you've got is you've got a window on the right hand side over here um, that's gonna show your image. And then you've got a window over here on the left hand side that's going to show your nodes. And so let's start with a very simple example. So if you look at this image right here, let's say that we wanted to make an adjustment to something like, um, let's go with the exposure in order to make it brighter or dimmer. So what you could do is you could go back in and adjust everything in your render setup back in your layout view right here, but then you'd have to re-render the whole thing every time you made a change. What we can do instead is we can do a shift A in this space and under color, we're gonna add an exposure node. And so if I click along this line right here, that's going to take this image and put it to the in. It's gonna take this image and put it to the out. Well now, what I can do is I can adjust the exposure. And the cool thing about being able to adjust the exposure right here, and obviously, yes, this is overexposed, but the cool thing about being able to adjust the exposure right here is this is going to give us the ability to make that change kind of live without having to re-render. So if you spent 15 minutes rendering this image, right, you don't want to spend 15 more going back and adjusting the emission or um, adjusting the exposure. So what this is going to do is this is going to allow you to actually adjust that exposure live on this image. And if you decided you didn't like that, you could just bring it back to your original image right here. So now you've got options in here to toggle between um, the different effects using the node tree. Okay, and so one thing I want you to take a look at, um, and then we'll take a look at um, another example or two of how we can use this tool, is um, over in your rendered image or your image over here on the right hand side, um, I wanted you to notice that if you look up here in the upper right hand side, there's an option for select layer. Right now, we have the layer that is the composite selected, meaning that's the layer that has all of the stuff that we're doing showing up in here. However, if you were to click the drop down right here and go to view layer, notice how there's another drop down in here. That's going to contain all of the data that's being created when you are rendering out your image. So if you notice, if I click back and forth between these, there's a lot of information in here that you could do a lot of different things with. But one of the things that you might've noticed is this layer or all of these layers correspond with the data that's over here in my render layers right here. These are all created when you first ran your rendering. Well, let's say that we wanted to get some more of this information in here, right? So right now, for example, we're doing passes on all of this information. Let's say that we wanted to add maybe like the normal, and then we also wanted to add maybe like the ambient occlusion right here. And we could do an emission even though we don't have any emitter in here. Notice how as I check these boxes, this is adding to this um, render layers node. Now notice how if I click on the drop down right here though, nothing is happening. The reason nothing is happening is because these layers are created when you run a render. So what that means is that means for those to actually show up, um, you would have to rerun or redo your render. So remember that we added the ambient occlusion pass in here. Well, if I was to go up into my render and do a render image, and all that did, right, is it just re-ran or redid this render. Well, now notice if I click on this drop down right here, I can see things like ambient occlusion. And so if I look at this, this created that ambient occlusion pass, which is giving us the information about what's going on in the crevices of this model. Well, now, what that means is that means I have that ambient occlusion data in here. I could take that ambient occlusion data and combine that with other passes or other things inside of the compositor in order to do more. So um, you can get those different passes by checking the boxes and then re-rendering things, but we're gonna go back to our composite. Okay, and so say we take that ambient occlusion, we drag it into our composite. Well, that's not exactly giving us what we want, right? Because now it's just showing the ambient occlusion in our composite. That's not necessarily what we need. What we wanna do instead is we wanna combine these two together. And so remember that we've already kind of adjusted our exposure in here, but then we've also got our ambient occlusion. Well, what we want this to do is we want this to combine them together into one piece of data that we can plug into our composite. So in order to do that, you can do a shift A and you can add what's known as a mix node. 
And a mix node is basically a node that's designed to allow you to combine a couple different things together. So I'm gonna drag that ambient occlusion into this image right here, but then I'm gonna drag my exposure into my other image. Well, notice how as soon as I do that, all right, so notice how if I do that right here with this just being a mix node, it doesn't really work very well because what it's gonna do, right, is it's going to pick between one and the other or it's going to kind of combine them together, which isn't necessarily what we want, right? So notice how I can drag this factor back and forth, but all that's doing is kind of like averaging the two values together, which is not ideal, right? What we want is we want to combine these together in a way where that ambient occlusion is being um, added to the top of our created image right here um, and made more powerful. So what you can do is you can click on this drop button right, or this drop down right here. Notice how there's options for different uh, ways that you can mix this together. Well, in this case, instead of using a mix, we wanna use a multiply. And so if we use a multiply, notice what that's gonna do, and I'm gonna zoom out for a second, is that's gonna allow you to use the slider in order to kind of enhance um, the two values together. So if you look at this, right, and we're gonna look at this crevice right here, if I drag my factor all the way to the left, it's kind of lighter in here, but if I drag it to the right, notice how, especially right up here, this is taking those values and putting them together in order to make them a little bit more, um, it, it, it's kind of multiplying them together and stacking them on top of each other. Now, notice how I can still go back in here and adjust things like my exposure. So notice how that is affecting my overall value right here, but you can also use this multiply node in order to adjust this. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's get rid of that multiply node for right now. And so what I wanna do now is I just wanna take that simple sequence and I wanna do some color correction to it. So um, I wanna give this more of a, we'll call it a blue tint. So what I can do is I can do a shift A and add a color node. And specifically, we wanna bring in a color balance node. So when I click in here, what that's gonna do is that's gonna give me this node where I can adjust the lift, the gamma, and the gain. And so if I click and drag this, notice what that's doing is that's coming in here and just kind of overall adjusting the colors in the image like this. So notice how each one of these is kind of adjusting a different part of the image. And so you could come in here and you could adjust like the overall color of your image. Um, notice how each one of these is going to affect different parts of your image a little bit differently. So you can kind of play around with this a little bit in order to get the result that you're looking for. But you can add nodes like the color balance node in here in order to adjust that. All right, so that's where I'm going to end this video. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the files available at the cgessentials.com slash compositor. So we're going to continue this series. I'm probably going to talk about some more specific effects and things that you can do with your images. So if you have any suggestions or questions, feel free to leave them down below. You can download the files at the link on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.